Hey y'all, I'm Tammy. This is Collard Valley Cooks. And today we're making my pumpkin cheesecake out of our volume two cookbook. It is absolutely delicious. And we wanna give a shout out to those who fought breast cancer and those who are going through treatments now. We'll be keeping you in our prayers. You can always leave us a comment and let us know who in your family's been affected by breast cancer, just so others will know how common it is. We're gonna start on this cheesecake. All right, we got several things to do to make a pumpkin cheesecake. And we are going to mix up the main part of the cheesecake in a bowl that's separate than the mixer because in the mixer, we're gonna mix up egg whites to fold into the batter. All right, so we're gonna start out with two blocks of eight ounce cream cheese. And I put more sugar in a pumpkin cheesecake than I do in a sweet potato because sweet potatoes are sweet and pumpkin is not. Okay, so there's a difference. So for the pumpkin, I use one and three quarter cups of sugar. And I had pre-measured this. You're gonna beat the cream cheese and sugar until it's nice and creamy. Now the biggest difference in this cheesecake and my plain cheesecake that's in the volume one cookbook is that this cheesecake uses egg whites that are beaten to make it fluffy and it has sour cream in it. And the other one uses whipping cream. So you just beat up your cream cheese and your sugar real good. We may actually have to put this in a bowl to fold in the egg whites. Uh, so we're gonna mess up a lot of bowls today. Let's scoot this right here and open up our pumpkin. All right, let's open up our pumpkin. And I'm just gonna use one can. I've got a 16 ounce can listed, but this is a 15 ounce can. I don't really know if they've changed the size since I wrote this recipe or not, but you wouldn't open another can just for one ounce of pumpkin. Just use a can of pumpkin. So we're gonna add this to our creamy mixture. So add your pumpkin to your creamy mixture. This bowl's gonna be full before it's over. And that's all right. Should have chose my stainless steel bowl, I guess. Says add the pumpkin, the vanilla, I'm going to beat it kind of hard to get that cream cheese nice and smooth, so I see a couple of little lumps. any lumps in my cheesecake. All right, so now we're gonna add two tablespoons of plain flour. We're gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt and we're gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. We're gonna add one cup of sour cream. Don't all that look good? Sure does to me. I'm going to visit the kids tomorrow, and this is one of their favorite things, so I thought I'll make it today so that I can take it with me tomorrow. So you're just going to mix all this until it's nice and creamy. If you want to, you can taste it, see if it's pumpkin-y enough, and for some reason, if it's not for you, you always add a little extra pumpkin to it. And my favorite way to make crust for pumpkin cheesecake or yam or sweet potatoes cheesecake is to use the cinnamon graham crackers. All right, we're gonna go ahead and make our crust. We're gonna use three quarter sticks of butter and I'm gonna go put it in the microwave and melt it. 
And then we're gonna add some crushed graham cracker. A lot of people will ask me, where's the spices in your cheesecake? And for the pumpkin. And I just like the spices in the crust. I like to taste the pumpkin-y taste. Um, and I'm the same way with sweet potato. But if you wanna add a teaspoon of cinnamon to yours, uh, or pumpkin pie spice, you are welcome to do that. Of course you can. All right, there's three quarter sticks of butter melted. This right here is six graham crackers crushed. We're gonna crush six more. I only wanted to crush six at a time because putting 12 in here is a little much. So here's three more, and now we gotta have three after that. We gotta open one more sleeve of graham crackers. And the reason I decided to crush these in front of y'all is because I'm gonna show you my favorite way to crush them. I don't know if you have one or not, but I just love these marble rolling pins. These are kind of expensive to purchase because they're heavy and the shipping might cost a little bit. So you wanna to try to find them on sale or you could actually find them at a resale. And that's what I found mine, how I found mine. But I'll go ahead and give y'all a link. And what I like about them is you can just beat the cracker. They're so heavy. And then when you go to roll it, it's so much easier to get them nice and flat because this thing is so heavy. You don't have to use as much elbow grease. I hope y'all know what elbow grease is. This should cover the bottom of a standard nine inch cheesecake pan. So you're gonna mix this up. And then you're just gonna press it into the bottom of your cheesecake pan. And you wanna seal that edge in the bottom of the cheesecake pan. Make sure you go ahead and preheat your oven. Two. And do a good job mixing this. Looks good, don't it? And it smells good. The cinnamon in there smells good. Now, to me, that little bit of cinnamon that's in the crust is what makes this taste so good. If you can't find cinnamon graham crackers, then get you just put you a teaspoon of cinnamon in your uh, cheesecake mix. You don't really have to spray the edges, but I'm going to. All right. And then we're going to put this in there. I don't tell you to spray the edges, so I hope spraying the edges ain't going to hurt it. Some of my pans are getting pretty old, and I got to where I spray them because if I don't, I just get worried that um, if I don't spray them good, things will stick to them. All right, now you're going to press this down into the bottom. This bakes for so long in the oven, I don't bake the crust before I fill the pan. It's a really thick crust too. So if you don't want this thick of a crust, you can always reduce the amount of graham crackers. Egg whites, I have five. I'm gonna break one and separate it for y'all just to show you how I do it. Or the easiest way to do it, especially when you got fresh eggs like I do, and they're at room temperature, the easiest way to do it is to use your fingers. Now, I'm saving all of these egg yellows for pudding. So you'll see I have them in a small container, and I'm going to make some good old pudding with it. That way they're not wasted. We're gonna start beating these on high. I'll turn this thing off to talk to y'all. You're gonna beat these until they get a little frothy, which you can see they're getting there. Then you're gonna be adding your quarter cup of sugar until peaks form, okay?
Now that usually takes about three minutes. So you can be cleaning up while you're waiting. All right, let's check on it. It's ready. Looks beautiful. All right, now we're going to put the two together. We're going to fold in the egg whites. So let this, let's get this in a large bowl. So here's our pumpkin cheesecake mix that we mixed up. There's that. All right, and now we're going to get our egg whites in here. These actually beat up faster than they normally do. Maybe it's my fresh eggs. And now we're just, just going to fold them together. And you're going to want to fold it kind of uniform. You don't want your cheesecake to look splotched when you cut it. So you're just going to fold it in. Reach down in that bottom and get that off the bottom and onto the top. So all of it gets the egg whites. If you want to know why you're not using a mixture, if you want to know why not use a mixer, because it will take the fluffiness out of the egg whites. I did notice, though, y'all, that my recipe doesn't have the temperature of the oven in it, of all things. So if you've got a volume two cookbook, take it out, and on page 70, and down at the bottom right, 325 degrees for 30 minutes and 350 degrees for 30 minutes. All right. Try to get most of the pieces out of it so that it looks more uniform. All right, now we're gonna put it in our cheesecake pan. You can use a nine inch or a 10 inch. And this is a nine inch. And you're gonna be able to tell this is a lot of batter. Whoops, there's a big piece of egg white. You don't want that in there. If we had a 10 inch, that would all go in there probably. But we don't. And I filled it pretty full. I'm going to scrape the top to make it flat with something. Let's see what I want to use. And this is not necessary, but it's something that I like to do. And I'm going to make a little bit of a mess when I do it. Possibly. And that's all right. Let's get our yummy cheesecake in the oven, y'all. Now you can put some water in a pan and put it on, an, on the bottom of your oven or on a shelf. And it uh, helps keep it from cracking if you want to. And we're going to do that. I pushed it all the way to the back. Try to keep it from being right underneath it, okay? I'm a survivor. I had cancer in 2010 when I was 40 years old, had the double mastectomy, and had treatments for chemo and radiation. So it's great to be here with you today.
All right. We are letting our cheesecake cool in the oven for an hour. It's not a requirement, but it works good if you do. And that way, if for some reason it's not finished cooking in the middle, it's going to as it sits in the oven. Now, you can tell it cracked. I did run out of water, and um, it's never bothered me that they crack. So if you really don't want yours to crack, then you've got to put a lot of water in your pan um, in the oven to keep it moist. All right, the sound was off when we made that little clip. So here's our pieces of cheesecake. We're gonna give it a try. Mm -mm. That's super delicious. No wonder we love it so much. I hope you make it this year. And if your family is not crazy about pumpkin, remember, you can substitute that with sweet potato. We'll see you next time on Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook like our mamas did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.